first story is titled Am I the a-hole for stopping child support to my ex-wife when my kids are ages 19 and 21 and I'm paying for 50% of college tuition plus room and board for both kids? Age of majority in their state is 18. I've been divorced for almost 15 years. My girls are well-adjusted, bright and articulate young adults with whom I have an excellent relationship with and communicate on a regular, if not daily basis. Both are attending college full-time and working nights slash weekends to earn some extra spending money. The oldest graduates in May 2021. Like anyone who gets divorced, my child support payment was pretty stiff and included a 65-35 split that put me in a financial bind for a number of years. Regardless, I never missed a payment, provided for private education expenses, maintained their health care coverage, and continued financial assistance with extracurricular activities, school outings, medical bills, etc. While I might not have lived in the same city, I maintained an active role in their lives, spending holidays, taking vacations together, visiting family, attending school-slash-sporting events, etc. Now that the girls are both adults and the youngest has graduated from high school, I recently terminated child support payments to their mother in accordance with state law. However, for the past three years, I've been paying for both children without issue, as it was always my intent to keep paying the full amount until the youngest was ready to go off to college. Yes, that's right, folks. I voluntarily paid an additional three years at the rate for two kids versus one. Now that I've stopped paying her directly, Mama Bear has turned into a grizzly and is demanding I maintain my payments to her for the next three years until the youngest has graduated from college. Side note here, our divorce decree specifically states that we have no agreements or responsibilities regarding college expenses. So for the benefit of my girls, I've continued to provide support and will continue to provide support. The difference now is that I'm working directly with the adult children and not my ex-wife. The ex is claiming all sorts of bills, but the girls assure me that they pay for almost everything, with the exception of their car insurance. So, I'm a bit frustrated here. I will always continue to support them and assist as long as they help themselves, but am I really such a nahal because I want to support my adult children directly versus through my ex-wife? Now for the top judgment, not a hole. Anything else I say will be mean, so I'll stop. Not a hole. Don't stop. Sometimes being mean is required. That ex-wife was likely being a jerk and just using the money to go shopping for herself or whatever. Extra money on the side, rather than money to go to the kids. She's an adult. She can grow up and get a job if she does not have one and wants to mooch off someone else's money meant for the kids she had with them. OP, block her. You were just a wallet to her, and all she sees is a fat wad of bills. Seriously, you're divorced. Why don't you just block her completely and everything? Not a hole. Your ex is saying child support, but she means spousal support. There is no need to pay the middleman when you are paying directly to the source. This. Ex-wife seems to be confusing child support with alimony. Not a hole. You are not the a-hole and not the ATM. Genius way of summing it up. If she thinks she still do, tell her to consult a lawyer to see what they say. I can't think of a one that would take the case. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not introducing my fiancé to my mother after she and my elder sister supported the affair and marriage of my brother and my ex-fiancé? As the title suggests, my literal older brother had an affair with my ex-fiancé, engaged, and married her. Now, my older brother was married at the time, arranged marriage, but I was in love and was with my ex-fiancé for two years approximately, engaged five months. My sister-in-law caught them and hell broke loose. They already have a child too, and for over a year, brother was just banished from our family. He got married at the time. But right after my dad fell ill and died, mom and elder sister reconciled with him. They attended a naming ceremony of his new child and also remarried them with proper ceremony. I was totally against it. I was and I'm still not over this. I consider this relationship breaker and consider supporting that affair as an act of betrayal. I told this to my mom and sis that our relationship would deteriorate. Later, they went ahead with their support to my brother but I didn't start any drama. Even had a talk with my brother, didn't accept his apology though, but still attended his remarriage and naming ceremony. 
Left the city after a month and never returned to that home for about six years now. I was not alone though. Had the support of a lot of relatives and cousins. Also ex-sister-in-law. The whole father's side of the family supports me. I only occasionally talked with my mom and sis. Just small calls or days here and there. I was always cold. Never spoke a word with my brother though. At this time, I fell in love again. And after five years of dating, now decided to get married. Back here in India, we require parents for us to be married. Girl's parents would never agree to the marriage if the boy comes alone. So my uncle and aunt played that role. And we didn't even inform my mother or sister. The news of our engagement anyway reached them. My mom and sister arrived at my home crying and blamed me for not involving them. The old, carrying me for nine months and raising me, was said, and mom said that I am punishing them for having a relationship with their first child. She told me that even my dad died without his first son being there, and I should be considerate to her as she is just acting on her feelings. I told them it is not me but my brother's affair that led to this. I told her she will be in my marriage, but after that, I am not sure if she would play a part in my life as a mother or grandmother to my child. What do you think? Now for the top comments. Not a hole. I fully understand why you don't want your future children playing with your brother's children. Why you don't wish to play happy families with your brother. What they did was the ultimate betrayal, and your mother has supported them before yourself. Leave your happy life and leave the mess behind. Not a hole. She chose to support the child who caused harm to another child. She made her bed, and now she gets to lie in it. Not to mention the harm to the brother's first wife and child. Not a hole. Not a hole. And if your aunt and uncle helped you out by representing your family, it sounds like you have some support from people who matter. Our culture puts a lot of emphasis on rug sweeping to keep things outwardly pleasant, but you don't have to bind to that. I'm guessing your mom figured you'd cave eventually so she could have both her kids in her life, but that's not your fault. And it's not you who disrupted the family in an irreversible way. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for flipping out at my employees for demanding I fire my daughter? I, 50 female, recently inherited a business from my late husband. My daughter, 21 female, is currently taking a year off from college. So I hired her as an operations manager because I felt she needed something that gave her a sense of purpose while she explores her other interests, including songwriting and fashion design. I also hope to one day pass the business on to her. Her job basically requires her to go in around three days a week. Around September, she got an internship in a fashion label. So she's been doing work for my business virtually and has recently been coming in again once or twice a week. Her fashion internship has her working closely with a CEO who she admires a lot. And it pays a lot better than most internships in this field. So she's been stressed out and crankier. At home, I know she's had less patience and her aunt jokingly calls her a Karen. As the months have gone on, I've picked up that most of my employees have been pretty passive-aggressive towards my daughter, and I once overheard somebody saying they wished my daughter's stepsister still worked there. My daughter is not my late husband's biological daughter. Yesterday, I came in early to see a few of my employees standing outside my office. They said they needed to talk to me and said my daughter was unpleasant and was constantly out of the loop. The janitor said the last straw for him was last month. When my daughter came in, saw her stuff in storage, and an argument ensued between her and everybody there because she forgot we had moved most of our operations to our other office space. Then one of my employees said they can't do this and didn't want my daughter around. I didn't like the tone and the self-righteousness in each of their expressions. I stood up and said they had no right to speak about my daughter this way and slandering her competence. I said I hate the way they looked at my daughter and said an insult to her was an insult to me, and told them don't think they can just demand executive decisions that are mine alone. I then told them this meeting was over, and they should worry about their own jobs and performance. Am I the a-hole? Our company prides itself in keeping our employees employed no matter what the economy, and I don't think people can find that much in our area since our part of the state's economy has been in the toilet for years. Now for the top comments. So, you just tanked the business your late husband built. You clearly have no idea how to run it. Your daughter clearly has no idea how to run it. And you are antagonizing the people that do know. A business is not a place to stash a kid needing time to find herself. 
What you did is an incredible insult to your late husband's memory. You're the a-hole. Nepotism at its finest. You're the a-hole. She's going to be a very expensive employee before this is over. You're the a-hole. I've worked in a family-run business, and I can tell you that if they're angry enough to confront you, it's really bad. You are creating a toxic work environment, and if you don't fix it, you're not going to stay in business long. I mean, even the janitor is pissed. In the office jobs I've worked, the janitors don't have to have a lot of interpersonal interactions with people, especially if they don't like someone. As long as you aren't an otherworldly slobber jerk, it's just not really a big problem for either party. And Opie's big bargaining chip is a tanked local economy. This business isn't long for the world. You're the a-hole. If multiple people collectively came to you to express their dissatisfaction, you should listen to them. Especially because she's your daughter. That took a lot of courage for them to come forward. Not to mention the unfair hiring practice of giving your daughter such a high position just to give her a purpose. Also, when the janitor tells you there's a problem, it's actually gone beyond a normal problem. They hear and know everything, and when they speak up, you better listen. Now, for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter if she gets pregnant, and then she will be kicked out? I, 48 male, and my wife, 51 female, welcomed our daughter, 25 female, and her husband, 26 male, back home because of their money issues back during the beginning of the pandemic. We have two other sons, 15 male and 8 male. Our daughter has always been somebody who has longed for a baby, and I know that she's been talking about it with her husband. My wife and I decided to sit her down and tell her and our son-in-law that she is allowed here, for now, indefinitely. But that if she gets pregnant, then they will be given until the baby is three months to find a new house slash apartment. My wife and I do not want another baby under the roof. When we do have a grandchild, then we will love that baby with no tomorrow. But we don't want to deal with the crying or inconsistent sleep schedules. We are already stressed out because our youngest has been going through some stuff lately. He has recently been determined to have Asperger's syndrome and the idea of having a baby there would probably not be good for him. As you can predict by the post, our daughter got upset and said that we were being terrible parents. And if this was indicative to our attitude towards a potential grandchild, then we wouldn't have any contact with them or the baby. My wife said she was taking it the wrong way and being dramatic, which led to our daughter storming out of the house and saying that she needed time to think. Our son-in-law had been silent during the whole ordeal, but he followed her and we haven't heard from them since. My wife is firmly set in her ways right now, but I'm starting to have possible second thoughts about it. I don't want our daughter to resent me slash us for this. Now for the top comments. Not a hall. If they can't afford to live on their own, then they can't afford a baby. And it would be very unfair for them to have a baby while living with you. Yep, babies cost more than rent or mortgage. And babies don't generate equity. Responsible parents should make sure they're in a good place to have a kiddo. And the home of someone else who doesn't want babies is not a good place. Not they hall OP. Not they hall. If they are so broke they had to move back home, they certainly don't have the money for a baby. You are entitled to your request. Your daughter needs to grow up. Eventually, the pandemic is going to stop being a valid excuse. My husband and I desperately wanted a baby for two years but couldn't afford one, so we had to wait. I totally agree. If they can't manage expenses of living in their own, they should throw a fit over having to wait for a baby. Not a hall. If your daughter and husband are having financial issues, having a child should be the last thing on their minds. Can't think of many more selfish things than having a child with no financial support or home to live in. It's genuinely gross. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.